Hi and welcome back. In our previous video we finished up the code for the mini UART and the linker script and in this video we're going to start setting up the SD card. So I'm going to walk you through downloading the Raspberry Pi OS, creating an SD card from it and so you can actually start testing and, and uh, running this code. So let's get started. First we're going to go to the Raspberry Pi website and actually download the uh, Raspbian, well formerly known as Raspbian Raspberry Pi OS. For me I'm going to take the light version here and just download it. I'll put the link here in the description. So go ahead and download and save. the. It's going to download as a zip file. So just download and save it and once once we've downloaded it we're going to go here to the terminal and unzip the file with the uh, unzip command. Here, 2020. There we go. And so this is only going to take a, a less than a few minutes, depending on the speed of your machine, of course. We're just going to um, unpack this .image file so we can write this file to the disk. And let's look here if we have it. There we go. The 2020 Raspbian Buster Lite image file. So we're going to use the dd command. And if you, we do lsblk, we can see this is our SD card that I inserted. Make sure you get the right one. If you do this next one wrong, you could destroy your hard drive. So I know SDB is the right drive. So if we do sudo dd, the in file is the image. The out file is going to be our dev slash SDB. We don't use SDB1, just SDB for the full disk. And then let's uh, also include a block size of four megabytes because by default it's 512 bytes and that's that'll make it take a long time. So this DD command is going to take quite a while to run depending on your machine. It could be five minutes, it could be 30 minutes depending on how slow your machine is. So just be patient, give it some time. There are some alternate alternative commands you can run to show progress and stuff depending on the distribution you have. So here we go. It, once it's done, if we run lsblk again, we'll see I have uh, now I have two partitions, sdb1 and sdb2. Let me go ahead and uh, open these in the file manager. So boot, yeah, so you have your boot partition right there. That's the one we want. If I do lsblk again, I'll see it's mounted now. You might have to mount it a specific way in your own distribution. So let me make clean again. So now I'm going to make, and it, we built the Raspberry Pi 4 image, and it copied the files correctly to the boot. So let, let me go ahead and actually create one for the RPI 3 as well. And we can just include the RPI version equals 3, and then make, well, let's clean first. Make, and that'll automatically put the version 3 in our config. So there we go. Now we have both of them copied to that boot media. So now I'm going to show you what I'm using for a TTL. I'll put this link in the comments as well. And this link is actually an ad link. So if you use this, it benefits the channel. So this is a USB TTL serial cable. And this one comes in a three pack for only 10 bucks. It's a good deal. Um, sometimes one of them will be bad, so it's usually good to get more than one. I've broken a couple from just overusing them. So if we look at this elinux.org, here's a little pinout. You can see we have the black, the white, and the green on this uh, third, fourth, and fifth pin. And you can actually hook the red one to the first pin to power it if it's the Raspberry Pi 3. It won't work on the 4. So here's how we can see our TTY USB is once it's connected. And we're going to run this screen command to actually connect to the serial terminal. So ls ls, LS TTY USB, yep, that's, that's it. You just want to make sure you got it on there and available. So I'm going to run the screen command with sudo on that port with the baud rate 11.5200. Now we'll see some initial output from the debug from, from the uh, Raspberry Pi hardware, and then we see right here Raspberry Pi 
bare metal OS initializing board Raspberry Pi 3 and done. And you'll see if I type some characters it's reading and sending back the output. So let's go ahead and I'll, I'll hook up my Raspberry Pi 4 and do the same thing. Let me just clear here. So I'll run the same command. Right now I have it hooked up to my Raspberry Pi 4 and the plug the disk into that and now I'm starting it up and you can see the debug outputs a little bit different but here we have Raspberry Pi bare metal OS initializing and board Raspberry Pi 4 done and again of course if we type it's echoing the output from it so there you have it um that's basically the whole run through of how to start a bare metal project um, get everything connected set up the SD card and actually run and connect to it with um, being able to see the output so this will this is the end of this first set of videos on this topic I, I'm probably gonna add a few more I might you know add some things related to some of Sergey's other tutorials I may create some drivers for other types of devices um, and if you guys out there have any ideas things you want me to to demonstrate on here or if you have any questions just put put them in the comments section I'll be glad to answer what I can and um, for now um, thanks for watching this tutorial set and I'll see you in the next video that I create I'm not sure how long it'll be but it'll be fairly soon so thanks again like comment subscribe if you enjoyed it